Hey mamas, pregnancy should be a season that you enjoy, but sometimes as your baby grows and more of their weight and pressure is being put on your body, pregnancy can become uncomfortable and even painful. I want to tell you that pain during pregnancy is not normal and not something you should have to shrug your shoulders over and accept as another pregnancy symptom. In this video, I'm talking all about pelvic girdle pain and low back pain and how you can find relief from it so that you can enjoy your pregnancy again. I'm Bridget and I'm a childbirth educator and birth doula in the San Francisco Bay Area and I love helping moms feel empowered in knowing that their bodies are built to birth. If you're new to this channel and want to be empowered and encouraged during your pregnancy, birth, and postpartum journey, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. So pain is your body's way of telling you that something needs to be paid attention to. There's a quote that pain is not your enemy, but your teacher, and that's especially true for pregnancy and birth. Pain tells us that we should do something differently so that we don't keep hurting our bodies. So by the end of this video, you'll understand why you're feeling the way that you are and know seven stretches and exercises that you can do to help listen to your body and relieve the discomfort that you're feeling. All right, so we're talking about low back pain and pelvic girdle pain. And while everyone pretty much knows where their low back is, what and where is the pelvic girdle? Well, the pelvic girdle or the pelvis is the bony structure that connects the top of your body to the bottom of your body. And it's made up of two hip bones, the sacrum and the coccyx, or what most people call the tailbone. And the purpose of the pelvis is to support and transfer the weight of your upper body to the lower body. Now you've got lots of ligaments and muscles that are attached to the pelvis that help protect your pelvic floor, which is a sling of muscles that stretch from the front of your pelvis to the back of your pelvis, and allows you to move around nicely and easily. Now when you're growing a baby, much of the weight from your baby, your growing uterus, and the amniotic fluid cause your pelvis and the rest of your body to move sort of unevenly or unbalanced. Plus you have a hormone floating around your body called relaxin that relaxes the ligaments in the pelvis, which means your pelvis, which should be totally aligned and balanced, is looser and more prone to becoming off kilter. So oftentimes this causes women to feel uncomfortable and in pain. And if you're feeling pain on your pubic bone or in your groin, down your inner thighs or your lower back or your outer hips, or if you feel or hear a clicking or grinding sound in your pelvis, you are likely to be experiencing pelvic girdle pain that many women experience during pregnancy. Now, just because so many women experience it doesn't mean it should be the norm and that you just need to grin and bear it. Remember Remember, pain is your body's way of getting your attention and trying to help you change something in order to make it better. So the earlier that you can identify these discomforts and start making changes, the easier it is to manage and even get rid of the pelvic girdle and low back pain. Now, because pelvic girdle pain stems from a misaligned pelvis, it typically is going to feel the worst when you are doing activities that require the one side of your body to work when the other side isn't working. So you might notice it more when you're trying to put one leg into your pants at a time, when you're turning over or getting out of bed or getting out of the car car or when you're walking up the stairs. These are all activities that most of us do every day, but for a mama with pelvic girdle pain or PGP, it can make her day really uncomfortable or sometimes even unbearable. So the first thing that you want to do to help your body is to train yourself to move like a mermaid and always keep your knees and your ankles together when you're doing those movements like getting out of the car or moving in your bed or getting out of your bed. You want to pretend that just like a mermaid moves her lower body in one motion, you will do the same. Doing this will help prevent putting more and more strain on your pelvis, especially in the front right here on the pubic symphysis. So when you're getting dressed, try to sit down while you're doing it. When you're climbing up and down the stairs, just take one step at a time to avoid that imbalanced movement from one leg to the other. And when you're getting out of the car, keep your legs together and swing them over the car door ledge together. Being conscious to keep those mermaid-like movements can really help you avoid feeling those shockingly painful sensations from PGP. 
You may also want to consider wearing a belly support band that helps relieve some of the weight from your growing belly on your lower back and pelvis. I will link one down below that I recommend trying out if you feel like being cautious in your movements and doing the exercises and stretches that I'm going to show you just aren't cutting it. The belly support band can offer immediate relief, which is sometimes just what you need if you're experiencing a flare up of PGP or low back pain during or even after your pregnancy. So pretending you're a mermaid and wearing a belly support band can really help PGP or low back pain from worsening, but the goal is to help you eliminate the pain, not just mask it. So I mentioned earlier that your pelvis has lots of muscles and ligaments that are attached to it. So when you strengthen and stabilize those ligaments, your pelvis is also able to become more stabilized and balanced. So I'm going to share with you seven movements that you could do to help with that stability and strength. But before I do, I want to be clear that you need to listen to your body as you are doing these movements. If they cause more pain, you should stop and spend some more time moving like a mermaid and wearing that belly band to help tame that inflammation and then try these movements again when you're not as uncomfortable. If you have a unique pregnancy that would make these movements risky for some reason, you definitely want to consult your doctor about it, but otherwise, these are very easy and mellow movements that provide a little strength and more stability more than anything for the muscles and ligaments around your pelvis. And I also recommend that if you have severe pelvic girdle pain or lower back pain, talk to a professional and seek out help from a physiotherapist or a chiropractor as they are going to be able to give you specific and individualized care that I can't necessarily give you. With all that being said though, there are things that you can do just on your own without spending any money in your very own home that can bring a ton of relief. So let's get started on that now. The first movements that you can do are pelvic tilts and circles on the birth ball. This movement provides relief and movement in your pelvis that you don't normally give it. To do this movement, you're going to want to sit on your birth ball with your knees at about a 90 degree angle and then have your feet firmly placed on the floor. You're going to place your hands on your knees and then gently roll your back backwards so that you're creating a C shape around around your belly and then roll your belly forward like you're creating another C with your back. When you're rolling your belly forward, your back doesn't need to take a super exaggerated position. Just a little movement will go a long way and you don't want to strain anything by exaggerating the stretch too much. You can do these pelvic tilts 10 times or as many times as it offers relief and this movement is safe at any point during your pregnancy. The second exercise to do is the glute bridge which helps strengthen those glute muscles to help support the work the pelvis has to do by taking some of the burden off the pelvis. So to do this, you can lie down on the floor or your bed if it's firm enough and bring your feet towards your bottom as you bend your knees upward. Once you're in that starting position, you'll want to begin the exercise by activating your glute muscles by tightening them. This helps draw your pelvis slightly upward, allowing the small of your back to drive into the ground to eliminate the space that was there from the arch of your lower back. With those engaged glute muscles, pull your pelvis upward toward the sky to create that bridge, moving purposefully and carefully until the portion of your back by your shoulder blades is the only part of your back on the floor. At the top, you're gonna hold for three seconds or for one deep breath in and out and release back down to the floor. Now, if you're starting to feel dizzy while you're doing the glute bridge, stop doing this exercise and get off your back. But as long as you're feeling comfortable, this exercise is safe for you and your baby. You can do this exercise 10 times at least once a day or up to three times. You might notice your butt feeling a little bit sore the next day after doing the glute bridge, and that's just your muscles getting stronger. The third movement is a stretch called the windmill because of the position that your body takes while you're doing it. So you're going to stand with your feet just far enough apart that it isn't causing you pain in the front of your pelvis where your pubic symphysis is. When you've found the right spacing, you're going to stand up tall with your shoulders stacked nicely on top of your pelvis. You're gonna take a deep breath in and then stretch your right arm down to your right foot or as far as it can go while stretching your left palm up toward the sky and then following that palm with your gaze. You're going to hold that stretch for three seconds and then you're going to release and come to the top and then do the same movement on the other side. So left hand to the right ankle 
or thigh if that's easier. Right palm towards the sky and then let your gaze follow your palm that's going skyward. You'll hold that for three seconds and then come back to the top again. So this windmill stretch really helps lengthen out those tight muscles around the pelvis that are causing restriction and tension in the lower back especially. This movement can be done 10 times on each side once a day or as often as you feel it helps you. The fourth exercise is the adductor squeeze. And for this, you're gonna need a chair or the edge of a couch or a soft squishy ball or a pillow. With this exercise, we're targeting the inner thigh muscles called an adductor, which is connected to the pelvic floor and pelvis. So making sure that the inner thigh muscle is strong and flexible will help give you a healthy pelvic floor and reduce the discomfort that you're feeling in your pelvis. So to do this, you're going to want to come to the edge of your seat with a tall back and your shoulders stacked above your pelvis. Your feet are flat on the ground and you have a soft ball or pillow between your knees. When you're ready, you're going to squeeze your knees together and hold for three seconds and then release while maintaining just enough pressure against the ball or pillow to keep it from falling out between your legs. Again, you'll do this for 10 times, at least once a day, up to three times a day at any point during your pregnancy that you're feeling discomfort in your pelvic area. Really quick, if you're trying out some of these exercises and stretches right now and are loving them and think other mamas need to see this video, give this video a thumbs up so YouTube knows that this is a video that should be shared with other mamas. All right, the fifth exercise we're about to do is similar to the fourth one, but instead of targeting the inner leg, we are focusing on the outer part of the hips where many women experience tension and discomfort during pregnancy. These are hip abductor pulses and you can use resistance bands if you have them or just your hands if you don't. So to do this, you're going to sit at the edge of your seat as before with your shoulders stacked over your pelvis and your feet firmly on the floor. You're going to crisscross your arms so that your right hand is on the outside of your left leg and your left hand is on the outside of your right leg. And then keeping your arms and hands firmly in place, you're going to push your legs into your palms to feel the resistance. You'll hold that for three seconds, then release and do 10 reps one to three times a day. Now, if you're Using a resistance band, you'll place the band just above your knees and then pulse your knees out just far enough to feel resistance, but not too far that it causes discomfort in the front of your pelvis. You'll hold that for three seconds and then you'll bring your knees back together. If you wanna get resistance bands for yourself to make this exercise a little bit easier, as well as to use in other exercises, I will link one down in the descriptions below that I use and I really like. Exercise number six is the bird dog, and this helps build up the function of the lower back by engaging the core and the back at the same time. Helping strengthen the core and lower back is going to help relieve tension and discomfort tremendously from that lower back as well as the front of the pelvis. So to do this movement, you wanna get down in a tabletop position on your hands and your knees. Your hands should be shoulder distance apart and your knees should be hip distance apart. And when you're ready, you're going to lift and straighten your right arm off the ground as you're lifting and lengthening your left leg off the ground so that you're working in opposite. Each time you move your arm and opposite leg upward, you want to make sure that you are engaging your core and keeping your back flat. So try not to let your belly fall too far forward towards the ground. Otherwise, this could make your lower back hurt even more. So this movement can be done eight to 10 times on each side, one to three times every day at any point during your pregnancy. So the last movement I want to show you is the seated hip opener. And this stretch is so good at providing better mobility and relief and you you can really do it anywhere that has a chair. So at work, while you're eating dinner or watching a movie, really anywhere. So grab a chair or any sturdy place to sit on that your feet can be flat on the floor and sit on the edge with a straight back and your shoulders stacked over your hips. You'll bring one leg up so that your ankle rests right above the opposite knee and flex your foot. 
Then gently drive your bent knee towards the ground or use your hand to gently apply pressure to feel the stretch. If you want a bit of a deeper stretch, move your chest forward to where the stretch suits you most comfortably. You might feel the stretch around the top of your leg where the front of your leg meets your hip bone or in your butt or your hips or down your thigh, depending on which muscles or ligaments are tighter for you. You'll want to hold this stretch for about 15 to 20 seconds, then unflex your foot, release the stretch, and return your foot slowly to the floor, and then repeat the stretch on the other side. You can do this stretch as often as you want at any point during your pregnancy. Mama, movement is so good for your body, pregnant or not, and especially if you have PGP or low back pain, sometimes you think you shouldn't move at all or that you should just confine yourself to bed until you're healed. But research tells us that plenty of movement done in the right way is often the best thing that you can do to get rid of that pain. So whatever movements you do, mama, be conscious of your body. Don't overdo it. Stretch often. Use good posture when you're standing or sitting, and then find ways to move that you love doing. Hopefully you love some or all of the movements that I shared with you in this video and can find lots of relief as you start doing them. So thanks for being with me in this video, and I'll see you in the next one.